there's a lot of good football players out there. And you always think, okay, talent, 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 talent. Number one value add that you could bring is being available. Available. Being available, showing up mm. every single day. Yeah. And that's when you know that's greatness right there. Get us an insight into what that locker room was like with Michael Irv, oh, Troy, with Emmett, uh, dynasty. the dynasty. What's Nate that Newton, locker room like? Nate Newton, Nate Eric Newton. Williams, yeah. Charles Haley. Haley. We had a lot of big characters on that team. And I'll, and I'll tell you, Jimmy Johnson did a great job of being able to have the pulse of that football team. I mean, when we show up on Wednesday, we're going to put that work in because the dudes were competitive as hell. Jimmy had to make sure he ran a tight ship. Fear and competition. Yeah. So it was always competition yeah. for your job. And he yeah. told you, you don't practice well, yeah. he's going to take your job. It's lonely at the top, dude. You're going to say something yeah. that's going to piss people off, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't there as a leader, as a captain of that defense, yeah. to be your best friend all the time, right? Yeah. My job is, hey, on Sunday, our ass is going to be ready to play. Come on. I don't care about Dion. Er, like I'm the dude when we walked on that football. Field. What would you say would it be the top three drains of a professional athlete? Why they would end up broke? Three Family. Five years. Really? Hands down. You got all these people who are just pulling. You have to become selfish in a lot of ways because yeah. it don't last forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. sit in the locker room and watch guys play two years and they're gone. Whatever you make, whatever you have, you better find a way to protect it yeah. at all costs. Yeah. Players, you know they. I remember when uh, a player, uh, one of the tackles, like, don't pay me in salary, pay me in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Ouch. I think the number one thing that athletes have problems with through that transition is the humility of learning something all over again. You have to understand the business because there was a lot of guys who were phenomenal football players who understood the contract but didn't understand the contacts the relationships, they're networking yeah. now yeah. and setting themselves up for later for sure. down the line. Yeah. So in the studio today, we have NFL greats, Cowboys all-time tackler, a former graduate of uh, uh, Arizona State, coached by my team's head coach, Levy Smith, uh, Darren Woodson, welcome to the studio today on the Seven Figure Squad podcast. Man, Matt, appreciate you, man. I'm glad you're here, man. You know, I'm glad we got another Darren <laughs> sitting next to me. And I know you're a Harvard grad. What, Colgate, something? You got to be brilliant. Actually, that Cornell. Cornell. Hey, Cornell. There we go. There we go. There go. <laughs> Dark mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but Darren Palmer is here, and uh, I just want to say thank you, Darren, also, because this is my second book with you, and we launched Gotcha yesterday, mm -hmm. and the same day, within 24 hours, you became a bestseller on Amazon. Yes. Oh, man. yes. So congrats. I, I appreciate you, dogs. I appreciate yeah. you. Thank you yeah. for having me. I'm glad to be with the other Darren as well. Is that <laughs> Darren Palmer and Darren Woodson. Yes, so sir. Uh, uh, welcome, welcome to the conversation. So I want to talk about an easy, uh, easy topic to kick out this conversation, easy, which we've already been doing. Yeah. Uh, let's talk football. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you, you're in a team where where – uh, they saw you as a guy that was the hybrid safety level. They, they, I think that they say you're the, ahead of your time. Yeah, There's a lot of yeah. guys because you're muscles upon muscles. <laughs> yeah, two twenty eight. Yeah. You know, you had, you had not very many things to do on campus outside of you know studying and, yeah, and go, going to libraries. Yeah, go to the libraries and, at Arizona State. Yeah, so we did. Right, d get their D twelve uh, yeah. compound there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, can, can you talk to us about your entrance into league? Because uh, yeah. I think it was coach that was looking at you as a linebacker, but a coach from the Dallas, the your position coach, yeah. was looking at you like a like a safety. Yeah. So when I came out at, at Arizona State, I played what they called the devil back, which mm -hmm. was kind of like a rover, a linebacker slash safety yeah. position. Everybody calls it the monster back, you know, back in the day. But anyway, Lovey Smith who you mm -hmm. well know, was my position coach at Arizona State. So I came in as a, a freshman. Yeah. And Lovey, at that time, I was 207 maybe, 205. Yeah. And he had me playing that position, but he was teaching me how to cover, how to cover wide receivers, how to cover the slot, how to cover tight ends and yeah. whatnot. So my early in my freshman year, yeah. that's all I knew was, okay, I got to cover this guy. And it, and it taught me that and taught me how to pass rush because yeah. I was playing a little bit of the linebacker position. So – I had, for my four years at Arizona State, I played multiple positions wow. throughout You're that versatile. time. Yeah. First, yeah. But the, during the draft, they had no idea. The NFL had no idea what they wanted me to, what position they wanted me to play, and they mm. called me a tweener. Yeah, like a like linebacker. undersized linebacker. Yeah, yeah undersized yeah, yeah. linebacker, yeah. Big, too big to be a safety yeah. and whatnot. So I get there. Yeah. The Cowboys draft me. Jimmy Johnson drafts but me. But you're running a 4 3 eight, 40, I though. ran a 4 3 eight, 40 <laughs> coming out. I can run straight. I didn't know about everything <laughs> else. But, so 
I get there, they have no idea what position they want me to play. Yeah. And the weirdest thing that happens, we go to training camp, they basically put me at the safety position, and at the safety position, we had to cover the wide receivers. So I'm covering wide receivers, and Jimmy walks up and goes, hey, I want you to go cover the slot receiver when he comes out. So I go out and I cover the slot receiver. You know, the position I play. Now, I wanted to start at yeah. the safety position. Sure. I figured, already, they made the de you know, that yeah. designation that I'm not going to be a linebacker, I'm going to be a safety. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, then I want to compete for, the, for that spot. Gotcha. I feel like I'm probably one of the better safeties, exactly. if not the best safety. On Would that be considered today's nickelback? No, it was just just, safety. Safety. Oh, just safety. the safety position. So gotcha. that's what I wanted to start at, right, at wow. the safety position. Gotcha. You know, they they when they call out introductions yeah. before the game, they yeah. eleven guys, that's right? right. Yeah. So I wanted to be one of those eleven guys yeah. as a starter. Sure. So Jimmy says, "No, I want you to be my nickel guy." Okay. Mm. So I went from college playing linebacker, rover, to coming into the NFL. My first couple of weeks being a safety to my entire first season with the Cowboys, I played cornerback. I was basically a corner. I played, and you, I, I came in, big. covered the slot, <laughs> covered the tight end, right? That's all I did. So I went through all that and, yeah. and thought I was going to play safety, play corner. Then the next year, yeah. they basically put me at the safety position. But I did, did yeah. multiple things. My entire career, 13-year career, yeah. I always covered a slot receiver. Never, yeah. We never brought a nickel guy in. I was a nickel guy. You never came off the field then? I never came off the field. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, Darren, you, you may not know this, but uh, I share a couple injuries alongside uh, <laughs> Darren really? as well. Yeah, coming from the military, so I got L four, L five. Oh yeah, as well. been there, been there. So, I, right mm. now, I didn't get surgery. I got stenosis. This is how you know old men are getting talking yeah, about. I, right? know, <laughs> <there's> <laughs> I know all those words. Stenosis. I know what all that is. L four, L five. Disectomy. Yeah. That one just season. Yeah. Season. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then I was getting eye lens replacement surgery, and I forgot it was the, the same doctor. Yeah. It was the same yeah. lens replacement yeah. doctor that. Uh, that worked out him. No, so we're following, I'm following your lead. And you're following <laughs> mine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's let's talk about that because uh, you, you you were being interviewed one time. So when did you know it was kind of time to hang it up? And you said you're playing ca playing catch with DJ. Yeah. And and you reached up to catch the ball and you went over my out. head. Yeah, yeah. So I had L four L five surgery going into my last year, my thirteenth year with the Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of traumatic, man. And I and I can tell you. You know, I had L4, L5 surgery in 96. So this is my second time, my second time around. First time I didn't have as much nerve damage. This time I had the nerve damage. Wow. I had the drop foot. Uh, you know, the, the pain was just unbearable. Wow. Uh, I was it like going down your leg? It was going all the way down, the nerve yeah. all the way down. So we had the surgery and they took a lot of that stress off the nerve, but I, my, the nerve didn't regenerate. It took a long time for the nerve to regenerate. Wow. So I'm trying to get back yeah. to play the, re the regular season. And it's, you know, October or November. And in the end, I was like, I can't. I'm not going to be able to make it. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to make it back for the season. So I, it's just a wash, right? Yeah. And then I made the decision. But I can tell you before that, I want to go back before that. Before, uh, before that, I was going to have the surgery. And there's this lady. I had, I've had 10 surgeries up to that point. Shoulders, shoulders, back, you know, you name it, dude. I'm, I mean, nothing below the lid. I never had knee or ankle or anything, but everything, shoulders and, you know, fingers. Impact and zone. Yeah, you know, forearms, <laughs> everything, yeah. right? And every time at the Carroll Clinic, there was one lady named Mrs. Walter, mm. old lady, white lady that used yeah. to be there all the time doing the MRI machines. She was just there. All the time. Through all those surgeries, she'd wow. be sitting there talking to me, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. First no name visitor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Bring some pant uh, Thanksgiving yeah, pie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I walk, I come in this time, they roll me in, and Drew Dossett's going to have the surgery, and I go through the MRI, and she, she rolls me back out, and she looks at me, and she says, uh, you know, I've been with you all these years mm. as a Dallas Cowboy. And I said, yeah. She said, have you seen your back? And I said, yeah. no, why? She says, it looks like you've been in, in 100 car accidents. And here's what she said to me. Yo, Matt, this is what she said to me, Darren. She put me on her hand. She said, I know you saved your money. And when she said that, I was like, this is before I was going to go into surgery. Mm. And it kind of, that stuck with me, man. Wow. That stuck with me. Even wow. after I woke up from surgery, I was like, man, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I want to live a life. A life. Sure. I want to have something. Sure. There's got to be more than this, yeah. right? And so all the projects, though, you didn't think there was more than this. No, right? that's yeah, all yeah, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. all I ever knew Raised was football, right? Mom, right? Yeah, 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 this is all I've ever known. So I get home, and then that's the day. Yeah. You know, I'm going through the rehab situation, and I'm with DJ, my, my, young, my oldest son. 
and we're playing ball, and he throws the ball over my head. This is months later. He throws the ball over my head, and I just reached up to try to grab it and fell down, man. I didn't even jump. I just reached up to try to grab it, and my body just – just went like this. Body just failed me. Wow. Just failed me. And I, that's when I said, no, nah, I'm not – This, that's it. Wow. I'm done. Call yeah. Parcells that day, who was our coach that day, yeah, and I yeah. said, hey, I want to see you in the morning. Yeah. And he says, don't you retire on me. <laughs> and I was like, no, we're going to have this conversation. And that's when I went in and had the conversation. Wow. So I'm done. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of playing through toughness and being a, a tough guy in the field, um, uh, Jordan, can we pull up that clip of, of, of Darren breaking his arm, playing against Baltimore? And uh. this is what he did. So let's take a look at this uh, clip here from uh, uh, Path to Safety. Yeah. Oh, no, no, not, not that one. Not that one. It, it was the other one. It was that YouTube one, not that one. Matter of fact, can we just, can we just stand this one, though? Matter of fact, uh, do you have the other one queued up? I did not download. Yeah, okay. Matter of fact, let's stay on that one, and uh, we'll just put this in the edit. Uh, uh, so, so, Darren, let me ask you this question. Um, oftentimes people think that talent is good enough to play in the NFL. You're fast, you're strong, you're yeah. big, yeah. physical, you're imposing. But when I look at this clip, I see Jerry Jones looking at different qualities before they even invest in a player mm. to come on board mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. draft process. So let's take a look at this clip of Jerry Jones asking about a player. Yeah. Get Paxton on the phone. Yes, sir. Family business, right? This hey, is uh, a speaker. Oh, yeah. speaker. Just man. Hey, yeah. Pax. Hey, Pax. Uh, over Sean, we may we think we may do something here, and uh, uh, tell us anything we need to know. Want to or not? We find uh, out. Great, guys, great person, great what kid. did you have in mind? Uh, he's uh, odd. Like every time I see him on the field, he's making plays. He can cover sideline to sideline. He's does he practice that way? Mm. Uh, not that this isn't anything, but Paxton said he's ridiculously athletic. He's a monster at practice. Said every time you look up, he's in the middle of the middle of, middle of it. Said he's everywhere. Okay. And is he a good locker man? Oh, yeah. I've talked to him every day. Talks to him every day. Okay. Talks to him every day. Now is that um, is that is, is that the truth? I mean, is that what's going on before? Oh, before the draft? Really? Before, oh yeah, you got to ask those questions. And you know, wow. look, I, I think that's a little bit made for TV. Okay, but okay. which you know, yeah. Jerry is always yes. made for TV. <laughs> but you better believe that when the scouts go see you yeah. and they do their research, because uh -huh. all you are is a commodity, right? Mm -hmm. You are a commodity. You are an investment, right? And they're about to make this huge investment on you, especially in the early rounds. Yeah. They're gonna go. Talk to your 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 prof the professors that you go to school wow. with, your friends, uh, the 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 maintenance people in the building. Wow. I mean, I've wow. seen a little bit of everything because look, you can fake yeah. you who you are until yeah. you go see the janitor that that right. sees you yeah. every single day and says, "Hey, now this guy just throws his stuff around yeah. and he's just a jerk, whatnot." Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm making that investment in you, yeah. You better believe I'm going to ask everyone wow. that's around you, people that don't, you don't even know, yeah. but are, that are watching you. I'm going to ask those questions, and I think Jerry uh, has done it the right way. And, and he asked the right question. One of the things he asked at the end was, you know, there's a ton of good athletes out there, man. Yeah. Is he a problem in the locker room? Mm -hmm. well, locker Is room he guy. a problem? Is he yeah. a locker room guy? And, yeah. I, and I'll tell you, man, one of the greatest things that I'll – one of the things that I've always watched – in my entire career in the NFL was there are great players, athletic players, guys that can hit, guys that can catch balls, guys yeah. that can spin the ball. Uh -huh. There's a lot of good football players out there. And you always think, okay, talent, 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 talent. The number one commodity, the one, number one value add that you could bring is being available. Available. Being available, showing up. Mm. Like it's the, wow. it's the greatest asset that you could ever bring. Because the talent level is that thin, man. It's yeah. so lean. Yeah. But if you get a guy that you've put all poured all this money into, yeah. and he's never on the practice field, mm. he's never playing on Sunday. Yeah. What yeah. what value are you getting out of that? Guys yeah. always in the tub, and they always said that saying: you can't yeah. make the, the club in the tub. You can't, <laughs> man. But if I can't see you play, yeah. and if you're not showing up on Sundays, yeah. if you got an in, you if you're yeah. hurt, 
Yeah. You know, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. You're hurt, get your ass out on the field, right? You're going to play, yeah. right? If you're injured, I get it. You're having ACL surgery, Can you right? find that? The hurt, yeah. hurt you're just kind of yeah. like, you got dinged up. You got dinged up, you man. You're, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. You got, you know, you got hurt. You lost your, you know, you, you got the wind knocked out of you. Yeah. You know, you, you got, maybe you got a, 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 you know, a finger that's a little like, tape it up and let's go. Yeah. Like, you can play with some of those things. Okay. And there's a lot of players, a lot of guys coming out of college that will not play if they're not 100%. Well, that person is not available. Yeah, I got it. He's not available. You can't tell me all these years you've watched Tom Brady all these years Shh. that he's not banged exactly. up a week, eight, nine, a of rib, course. a yeah. shoulder, or something. Yeah. He's got something, but he plays through that part Great. of it. And that's what I'm saying, man, being available. I saw Michael Irvin for all those years show up, show up, not just on game day, yeah. Wednesday on practice, Thursday on practice, Friday on practice, yeah. Saturday, like every single day. Yeah. And that's when you know that's greatness right there, man, just being available. It's huge. Because I remember uh, another interview I saw you do, you were talking about um, your observation of Troy Aikman. He said, yeah. before the game, the guy's not even walking. The guy can't walk. Can't walk, man. But he yeah. stretches out, yeah. whatever the guy to Back do. Back spasm. Dude, I'll tell you what, you know, and Troy can attest to this. Totally different person than what he was. Troy couldn't touch his feet. He had zero flexibility when he played football. <laughs> wow. None. I'm talking, man. This dude has – I look at Troy and I was like, man, how in the hell is he an athlete? He can't touch his feet, right? Wow. He can spin the ball. Yeah. And but back then we didn't we weren't doing all those things like the yoga and all that stretching. We were just like pilates. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, pilates. <laughs> we just walk out on the field and you you know stretch for a little bit and you pretty much go. He's changed that all up now. Wow. Now he's doing all these things and now he's he's a better. I think Troy was a better athlete today yeah. than he was when he was in his fifties. Oh, in his fifties, man. Okay, See, yeah, he's just more well rounded. But so, so I just joined the fifty club. Exactly. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, drum. By chance, do we have that YouTube clip up, that timestamp? Uh, Not yet. Not yet? Okay, check your email. Um, check the timestamp because I want to go to this injury that Darren had. So uh, no problem. Are you interested in starting your own? Cool. So we'll, we'll just queue. That's why I love, I'm glad we ed yeah. we're, we're editing this. Okay. It's this YouTube um, automation channel. But all people do. So it's playing the uh, the commercial right now. No YouTube, pr YouTube premiere over there. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I want to ask you this question. Uh, your, your 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 former teammate, Coach Prime, yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Confidence, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? You look good, right? You, you, you play, play good. good. You yeah. play good, you pay good, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you yeah. pay good, that's all good, yeah. right? That's all good. Um, but Coach Prime, uh, you, you were with him. You, you, they were the standout players in, in a in a team. And when you retired, you were the last player of that dynasty in the nineties yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to retire. So, what was that prep time? It, get, get us an insight into what that locker room was like with Michael Irvin, oh, Troy, man. with Emmett, with, yeah. with, with, uh, with Prime, oh, Prime uh, with with all these guys. The dynasty. Just, like, yeah. the, the, the dynasty. What's Nate that locker Newton, room like? Nate Newton, Nate Eric Newton. Williams. Yeah. Like, I mean, Charles Haley. Haley. Man, yeah. we, we just had so many. Big Larry. Big Larry. We had a lot of big characters uh, on that team. And, I, and I'll tell you, one of the things that Jimmy Johnson did a great job of was being able to have the pulse of that football team. Mm -hmm. And being able to to pull all those personalities together yeah. and say, hey, on Wednesday or you know, when we show up on Wednesday, we're going to put that work in because the dudes were competitive. As hell. Yeah. Everybody was competitive, yeah, yeah. right? So Jimmy had to make sure he ran a tight ship with all those personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy left. The personalities yeah. kind of took over the locker room. And you saw the slide that we started yeah. to have in 94. We got to the NFC Championship with really good talent. Then 95, we found – I had no idea how we found a way to win that. <laughs> no idea, man. We figured it out, yeah. put our talent together. But Jimmy did a great job of, of manufacturing this, this work. Like, hey, yeah. when you show up, and he did it with fear. Yeah. He did okay. it with fear. Okay. Fear and competition. Yeah. So it was always competition yeah. for your job. And he yeah. told you, you don't practice well, yeah. he's going to take your job. Mm. Right? So it was always that part of it as well. And he cut guys. Yeah. So it wasn't so much that Jerry was all the way involved, because Jerry wasn't mm. that much involved. Jerry was yeah. doing owner stuff early on in, uh, in, yeah. in, in, within his ownership of the, of the Cowboys. Jimmy ran the day-to-day, -day, and he ran it so hard that he cut guys right in front of you. No. So, oh, hell yeah. Like, I mean, I can tell you so many stories. But, <laughs> it, but it put the fear of God in you because you didn't want to lose your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew who the pecking order was. Yeah. Troy ain't going nowhere. Mm. Uh, Emmett ain't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Michael ain't going anywhere. Everybody else, 
your ass is on the line, right? So yeah. you better be showing up, practicing, doing all those little things. So that was kind of the mentality there, but it created like a fever as well, too. It mm. created this, I'm going to keep my job. Yeah. We're going to compete at the highest level. Yeah. And if I don't do what's right, Nate's going to talk trash to me. Haley's going to talk oh, trash yeah. to me. So we, it, it was just yeah. a very competitive environment. T -t -t give us an insight what that trash talking is like. Oh, dude, let me, let me tell you. I, I can tell you, one, one, yeah. of, the, one of the, the quietest guys... Like Michael Irvin, of course, was like <laughs> all, always to this day. Like if Mike, if Mike caught a ball on you, he's I'm killing y'all's ass. Like he's just I'm killing, I'm murdering you out here. This is like that's how Mike would talk. Like and he let you know too. He let you know. He let everybody else in practice know that I'm killing you out here in one on ones. But here's the thing about Mike. Mike would beat you in a one on one, and he talk. He slammed the ball, and he would do his little dance or something, and he walked back. And this is us practicing. He'd talk, say something to all the DBs, but he'd always. I remember him grabbing me and saying, "Hey, you know when I ran that route, you were leaning inside. I got you on that." Oh side. wow! Because he'd always tell me at the same time. We go in the locker room. We say, oh, "I'm talking this trash," but hey, when you play Jerry Rice, I need you to be on. I'm gonna oh, sharpen your ass up, wow. right? So that's. That was the kind of the, yeah. so you kind of like it's okay. constructive. It was constructive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's got to let you know. Yeah, but then he's gonna come back and he's gonna he knew say, he needed man. you. Oh, he needed me. Yeah. He needed me yeah, on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. He needed yeah, myself, yeah. Larry, Larry Brown, Kevin Smith, all these guys. So he was kind of that guy. Uh, Dion was the funniest dude I've ever been around. <laughs> like hands down, he and Larry Brown and Kevin Smith. Man, we had a great little meeting room. DB room, yeah. the DB room. But Dion was the guy that. He'd be out on the edge, so he used to call it the autobahn. He okay. never came into the huddle, so we get the play in. I call the, I see the play, and I call the play in the huddle. The corners, we always played man to man, so all they did was they stayed outside. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't even come speed to the huddle, yeah. right? <laughs> and they look at me, and I just give them yeah, boy, signals. <laughs> you know what you're doing? You're playing <laughs> cover one. Yeah, gotcha. right? Sure, sure. Oh, you're playing. You're never playing yeah. cover two. Yeah, zone, no, 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 no zone. No, 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 he no, didn't no, want to play his own. He wanted to shut this dude down, right? So he would be out there, and every once in a while he'd come in. And he'd be talking. You could hear him talking to the to the wide receivers out on the edge. And he'd be like, hey, I'm out here blessing this dude. I'm laying hands on this fool. He never cussed, right? Never said a cuss word. I've never, I've never seen him drink. I've never seen him cuss, right? Wow. Ever, right? Wow. But he'd be out there rated G, <laughs> talking trash. This bull about, junk. Yeah, I'm, I'm blessing this man. I'm, I'm throwing water in, on you in the name of Jesus. Like, I could hear him out there talking about talking to a wide wow. receiver. Like, yep, wow. just giving it to I'm him just out. giving it to him out here. You better not throw it. Looking at the quarterback on the court. You better not throw it out there. Hey, look, I'll play off. You can hear him. I'll play off this time. Hey, Brett, Brett Barb, I'm going to play off. You, you go ahead and throw it out there this time. I, will, I won't play wow. off. Like, that's how. <laughs> it was amazing, man, to play with this dude. Best athlete, hands down, that ever played with. What what uh, what made it was we asked him on stage. Just, we'll show you your temp, top ten plays. He goes, stop. I think we got we got into the third play. Stop it. Turn it off right now. None of those were my top plays. Mm. My best mm. plays was never caught on camera because it was in practice. Oh yeah, dude. he <laughs> shut it down. Man, his first week, he came in and and. and Take it. We we won back to back championships. So we were a team before Dion got there. Mm -hmm. that we were a Super Bowl caliber yeah. team. We had yeah. talent all over the place, right? So he comes in, and his first day at practice, we're doing one on one. So one on ones is set up this way. So you have your left corner, and whoever the left corners are, and maybe two safeties, okay. and then you play. You go up against the wide receivers, and on the other side of the field, you do the same thing. You just split it up, right? Mm -hmm. So their their wide receivers are are going up against the the you know the right corners, and then the safeties that play on the right side, and blah blah. So Dion comes out first day as a rookie. No, this is okay. his first day. Then he okay. comes over from San Francisco. Oh, I got you, got you. He comes from yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. He comes over to yeah, us. Atlanta, and actually, yeah, yeah. He, I think he was playing baseball at the mm -hmm. time, and then he came over to us or whatever it was, right? It's his first day. His first day he's suited up and he's practicing with us. And someone ran an out on him, like a five-yard out, and caught the ball on him. And you could see he, like, looked, and he looked at all the defensive backs that were on his side. I was on the opposite side. And I could see all the – DBs start walking over. He told the DBs, he said, if you want to get some work, you better go get over, get that work over there because I'm shutting this down. And he went like eight times. Back, another wide receiver step up, boom, he go. The wide receiver wow. go. Because it doesn't work that way. You usually go 
The guy, you go with someone, yeah. and then the, the other DB jumps rotated. in after. Yeah, yeah you're rotating. Yeah. No, no, he said, everybody go on that side. He shut it down. Man. He went like eight or nine reps. They were running nine routes on him, goes on him, yeah, yeah. deep digs. He shut it down, intercepting wow. balls and balls. And I was like, dude, this is the dude. Wow. Like, he's a dog. You talking about a dog. dog. This was a dog, dude. Yeah. And he, he practiced the same way he yeah. played because in yeah. practice, man, it was – yeah. It was just on. It was yeah. never off. Yeah. It was always on. I think that's what a lot of people misunderstand because they, they see football, they see professional sports, you know, two and a half, three hours on TV, but they don't see the prep work. They don't yeah. see the off the field stuff. And they think that this hour, two, three you hours. You just show up. Yeah. 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 All they see is Sunday. They don't see yeah. like, well, I saw a guy in Troy Aikman every day, 530 in the morning, lunchbox, show up at practice, show up early. Wow. He's going to beat everybody there. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to work his ass off. He's going to be at practice. He's yelling at everybody yeah. at practice because he's a perfectionist. Yeah. He wants it done the right way because on Sunday it's easy for him, right? He would even yell at mm-hmm. oh. the, the, even in defense? Everybody. Dude. Really? Everybody was getting – if practice it wasn't going well, specifically on the offensive side, he was screaming at dudes on the offensive side. Yeah. But if defense was letting up, he'd be like, hey, y'all need to pick y'all shit. Pick wow, it up. Okay. Oh, yeah, he was – Don't go through motions. Don't be going through the motions yeah. now. It was about wow. winning championships, man. He had a different mindset. Yeah, that's, I say that we were talking about in the office all the time. You know, phone zone. These these are things that we need to get good at the, in, in business. Uh, is rocking it, rocking. I mean, and you know, there's so many things that apply yeah. in in business, business as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Like it's lonely at the top, dude. Come on. Man. How many times I look at that? At, and it's not because Troy. people aren't invited. No, it's not because they're not invited. <laughs> it's just like sometimes yeah. you got yeah. you're gonna say something yeah. that's gonna piss people off, mm-hmm. right? Or you're not going to agree with what everybody else has to say. Uh-huh. When you're a leader, man, yeah. you ain't going to be everybody. I, I'm not, I wasn't there as a leader, as a captain of that defense, yeah. to be your best friend all the time, right? Yeah. I'm not. That's not my job. Yeah, see, my man. job is, hey, on Sunday, our ass is going to be ready to play. Come on. Right? And you're going to respect the fact that I'm going to show up, I'm going to do it the right way, and I'm, exp- I'm going to hold you accountable yeah. the same way. And you might not like it. You may not like what I say to you. And, and that's how the business world is, is, is as well, right? Sure. There's so many people that, are, that want to be your best friend. Like, yeah. no, dude. Yeah. Like, I, as a business owner, my goal is to see the business continue to grow. Yeah. That's it. I got to drive it. I got to drive yeah. it. Because you ain't the only one. I got 85 <laughs> of you who have kids who, have, who go to school, yeah. and they got to pay for all this A, B, and C. I'm not going to waste my time. Don't waste my time yeah. with your bullshit. Yeah. And I got yeah. 85 other folks yeah. that I'm trying to support at the same time, man. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be some tough times you're going to have to go through. Yeah. So, Darren, yeah. would it be safe to say when you look at the situation far as Troy being able to lead the team and even you on the defensive end, because he was able, we have a phrase that Matt shares with us as a team, uh, leading from the front. Yeah. So yeah. because of his consistency of showing up, being able to work his tail off yeah. and being able to call out the other guys because he's leading for the front. Do you think that's Dude, that's the people being willing to listen to him? And absolutely. Take they that's know a respect. Cares. There's a respect factor, right? I know that Troy's going to show up every single day and chop wood. There ain't no days <laughs> off. So right? he's not asking you to do something. He ain't, no, he he ain't going to do it. He, he's doing it. Like, I just I saw this little insert about uh, Elon Musk the other day about him working yeah. today, being the richest man yeah. damn yeah. on yeah. earth, right? Yeah. And he's sleeping at the office. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Like, how right. are you an executive yeah. underneath him <laughs> and you're going home? Like, it didn't happen, right? What an uncomfortable so company an uncomfortable work, right? situation, man. So you got to leave, man. It's got to be you. If you're the tip of the spear, yeah. they better be seeing you getting dirty. Yep. And, and by default, think about that too as well. Let's say you, uh, you have a CEO that doesn't put on that pressure. Well, what type of company are you? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, not, yeah. you're not a trillion dollar company. And he's got, think about this, he's got three companies. Uh, a valued practically all billion com- billion dollar companies, yeah. one trillion dollar company, and they're all competing at you, and he's running all three of them. Yes. And he's putting pressure on all of them. Yes. And you, you want to take it easy? Yeah. I can. just get a job there just to see what it's like to be under. Yeah, right? great. If I'm, if I'm nobody, I'm, I'm getting a job or to be around exactly. greatness. Exactly, be around greatness, man. We got that clip yet, Jordan? Yes. Cool. So let's talk about what greatness does when he breaks a bone. Mm. Mm. Let's, take, let's take a look at this clip. I gotta see this. I haven't seen that. Oh really? Uh-huh. It's at the it's at the Cowboy State, right? I can remember the emergency office. room door office, opening, yeah. and it was just tile, like slippery. As you can imagine, the emergency room of a hospital. And I'm walking in there with cleats. I'm slipping and sliding all over the place. Britt's holding me up in this process. He's yelling at the nurses because they need to find an X-ray room. I looked at the ER doctor and I said, "Listen, I I don't have any paperwork. I don't have anything. I need an X-ray form." I need you to hand me the x-ray, and I'm walking him out of here and going back to the stadium, and you can just send us the bill. 
there are people that are standing there looking at me walk in in my full garb uniform. <laughs> I told the ambulance driver, take him back to the ambulance. I waited on the x-ray, grabbed it right out of the, right out of the processor, and we went back to the stadium. And Britt Brown was at his best, yelling, screaming at people, giving <laughs> orders. They were asking for my insurance, and he's like, what? we're playing a football game. <laughs> Doc looked at it, and of course it was fractured. And what he said, you need to cast this up, I'm finishing the game. Look at that. I asked wow. the doctor, I said, hey, you know, can I, can I hurt it anymore? And he's like, no, it's broken straight through. You, you know, it is as bad. And I said, well then, then I can play. And he's like, no, you can't play him. I looked at Britt and I said, Britt. And Jim Mauer, both of them, and Jim was like, I don't know. And I looked at Britt and Britt was like, you're not gonna hurt it anymore. <laughs> there he is. He's so on the field, did. man. Fresh oh, cast. Man. From here down to his wrist. He came out, they couldn't find his helmet. They finally <laughs> found it there oh, in the man. trunk that had yeah. been put away. But watch him when he tries to it wasn't one of those anti-concussion helmets either. He yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Jamal Lewis too. Coming at him. <laughs> God, like a mummy, man. I haven't seen this. But watch Darren Woodrow, but he's playing with one arm, and that one arm is his left arm. But I'll tell you, he, he's a warrior. I mean, that's another word we throw Tackle around one arm. Much. But if we talk about the definition, I would put Darren Woodson in that category. I would take him. That's it, man. He finished awesome. Game. The real so root cause so of you, snoring you play is the, not you play what you broken, think. You're playing with a broken bone. Yeah. Well, was, was it? Uh, was it the, the the two? Yeah, it was actually. You probably see it from here now. It was. It was that. Show it one more time. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Receipts. Receipts. Yeah. And look, I'm not proud of that one either. Yeah. Like, that sucker hurt. But uh, it was. Was, was it both both the both, both the bones? Of them, yeah, both bones broken. And wow. and and, I, and and the thing is, is that your soul wound up anyway you got so much adrenaline, adrenaline going and it, you, you're, you're not feel, really feeling the pain yeah. until until later on but it was uh look man i don't there's so many guys that play with injuries i've watched emmett at the running back position play with an ac joint in my second year in the league like he's playing we're playing the new york giants we gotta yeah. win yeah. this game he comes in, I mean, he's playing, he gets hurt early on, he comes back with an AC joint. Like, yeah. it's sticking up. And he's <laughs> playing, he it's finishes the, the game dude, at the running back. You know you're getting hit, right? <laughs> I mean, I've seen so many guys play through injuries. Man, that's, I'm telling you. That's nuts. Like, I'm not even, yeah. that's just one guy that's, yeah. that, you know, I was one guy out of millions, even today, watching yeah. guys playing through these yeah. injuries, man. Yeah. So I, it's not that big of a deal. So you, you had some crazy coaches. You got uh, Lovey Smith yep. at ASU. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Johnson, uh, Parcells, Coach Campo. Yep. Uh, in your opinion, which coach got the most out of you? Uh, you know what? Lovey Smith got a ton out of me. Really? He's got he got a ton. Lovey Smith was the first um, coach that was basically. I came out of college. My you know I was raised by a single mom. I was the youngest of four. Um, Lovey Smith was like a father figure. Mm. He was more than just a coach. Like one thing I learned early on was time. To this day, I, I get it. Like time is of the most importance to me mm. in, in my life. Like I, I, I understand time and, and the way. Like time spent with somebody. Time, not only time spent, just okay. time. Period. Oh, like okay, gotcha. I was a kid okay. coming out of West Side Maryville High who always late for school. I'm walking in late for class mm. all the time. Like I didn't. Meeting starts, I'm barely walking in, sitting in the back, leaning back. And, I'm here. Oh, I'm here, yeah. right? I, I'm here. So my first year, I show up at, at, at class, and I'm late, and they had these, we call them hall monitors. So, like, mm. so the athletic department sent out, yeah. they sent out these monitors, and they would basically you know, make sure that we were in class mm -hmm. and on, in class on time. Well, I used to walk in my biology class the first year, and I was late. Like First class, first class of the first day. First class, right? <laughs> yeah. They marked me late. So... They send it in to Lovey Smith, and this remind you, there's nine of us in this room. It's like all the, the linebackers and, and the safeties were all in this one room, and Lovey Smith is our coach, right? And I walk in, and he says, hey, you're late for class. And I was like, coach, I, just, I walked in. He didn't even start. He said, no, you're late. He says, so you know the punishment for being late? What's the punishment? 4.30 a.m. Everyone, not just me. Oh, shit. Ooh. No team. Then all nine guys in that, oh, dude, you talk about, hey, you know the, the, the seniors are like, oh, you know. <laughs> but that's what you do. It's, it's mutual accountability. Oh, yeah. yeah, mutual accountability. Yeah, yeah. So we, 4.30 in the morning the next day, we all got up and we ran. 
And they wanted to kick my ass, dude. I had, I'm telling you, I was a young 19, 18 year old kid, and they were like, "Gonna beat your ass, dude. be late again, be late again, figure it out, right?" So, and vice versa, those guys graduated, and there were there were other guys that came in that were younger than me who I had to get up and run for Man. at the same time. So I taught people time and respect the time. So I learned that early on. I'm telling you to this day, I can't be late. Hmm. The anxiety that I yes. have for yes. showing up five yes. minutes early is just outside of itself. Five minutes early. I can't. No, wow. dude, you show up 15, yeah. 20 yeah. minutes early. Yeah. You said be here at 1130. I'm going to be here at 1115, 1110. Wow. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... It's just in me yeah. to be that way yeah. because it's, yeah. you know, I respect. So Lovey kind of taught me that part of it and then taught me the game. Mike Zimmer yeah. was my position coach. He ended up being the Minnesota Vikings head coach. Oh, okay. He yeah. was my position coach. He and Dave Campo. Zimmer taught me, Zimmer and Campo together taught me had the confidence of, of playing the positions that I was playing. Like I was playing multiple positions, yeah. safety position, the nickelback guy. Yeah. Sometimes I play linebacker, depending on who we mm-hmm. were playing. So yeah. they taught me all these positions, but they not only did they teach me that, they taught me the confidence. Like I had, they sure. they empowered me yeah. to know that, damn, dude, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Like you're damn. Even when I was doubting self, they're like, oh shit, dude, you you can do this. So they taught me those positions that really, I think it birthed kind of me who I was as a player because I yeah. came in every game with this mentality that I was better than everybody. I didn't care about Dion. That's Irv, it. like I'm the dude yeah. when we walked on that football. Because you play with Roy Williams too, right? I played with Roy yeah, yeah, Williams. Yeah. I, man, I yeah. played with a lot of lot of great yeah. football players. Yeah, yeah but I always felt like huh? even ever, yeah. 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 But I always felt like I was the guy. Like, and and yeah. I think that's you know when you see certain players come in, Dion, you can't tell Dion that he wasn't the best <laughs> dude to ever play. But that's a that's a different mentality when you come in with that kind of confidence. Yeah. In between the lines, man, that's special. That's it. It makes you special. Don't let my confidence <laughs> offend right. your insecurity. Yeah. <laughs> um, when when you were when you're playing, what, what what player? I'm just curious before I would go shift to finance. Which player for you was the toughest to cover? That the tough the, the, the mo- that you had to prepare for oh, the most that gave you the most fits. Look, Jerry Rice is is by numbers was the best wide receiver. Like I played with a guy every day in Michael Irvin, dude. Sure. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like you talk about made me the player that I am, Michael Irvin is is probably in my I'm biased, but he's in my opinion the best I played against. Jerry, uh game planning Jerry is you better know where he is. At all times. At all times. So if you don't know where he is, mm. he's going you're going <laughs> he's gonna get you somewhere down the line. But Jerry, every route looked like a go route or looked like a slant. His body control, the baby way he leaned into a wow. route, he was just he was very particular in his route running and it made things hard mm. and he did the little thing he blocked down the field he you know he just wanted to win but he wasn't known as the fastest one he was he never no no but he just was very precise and smooth what he and did. that made him fast he's professional yeah. we used yeah. to call him the pro dude he yeah. is he's a pro now yeah. he knows what he's doing randy moss changed the game Randy Moss was the guy that your ass went to sleep the night before, and you may have gotten an hour. <laughs> you may have gotten an hour because it's different, right? He was different. He came into the league, and, yeah. uh, I, you know, going back to Jerry, I could, we could have Jerry covered. Steve Young was not going to look at him. Mm. He's going to go, oh, he's covered. I'm going a different direction. You could have Randy Moss couple, covered, mm. t- triple teamed. And they were gonna throw the ball up, yeah, and let him go get. Do he moss you, <laughs> embarrass you? Like he they helped was, him dude, moss you. That's what he called it. Right? They, they, they moss you. You been mossed, right? Yeah. But dude, he would run. I saw him on film the first time, and I was like, he don't look that fast. And Mike Zimmer was telling us, hey, I want you. We played cover two. We were trying to bracket him. Yeah. They said, hey, uh, we normally line up at 14, 12 to fourteen yards in cover two to, yeah. to double a guy. Yeah. I want you guys to back up to seventeen, and I was like, seventeen, <laughs> dude, please, he ain't running that fast. Come on, dude. It's like cushion for a pro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I lined up fourteen yards, right, and I not even thinking. I'm trying to double this dude, and I yeah. saw him. He took off. The ball snapped, and I saw him, and I looked back at the quarterback, and I looked, and he was like right on top of him. I had to grab him. Wow. He, like, he was on top. Yeah. The speed does not, from watching him on film and then watching him in person, it's totally different. Wow. Totally different. So he, he was the guy that, that just, 
He should have been a cowboy. We <laughs> he should have been a cowboy. And he had it out for us. He'd kill oh, yeah. us every time he saw us. Crazy fast. Crazy I mean, Yeah, because I, you know, I, I'd see him all the time because I'm, I'm a I'm Chicago guy. Yeah, with the Vikings, that's right. The Vikings, you know, Vikings so, yeah. You know, yeah. All the time. And that's after uh, 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 that uh, wide uh, uh, Chris Carter. Carter. Chris Carter. Yeah, big there. hands. Yeah. And I remember Chris Carter would do these hands exercises. You know, you'd go like this, just to make sure his hands were yeah. more flexible. to receive. We're talking about ball. trash talking, dude. I can't stand Chris Carter. To this day, <laughs> to this day, I don't like Chris Carter. I saw him at ESPN, and I was like, dude, I don't like you. <laughs> I just, he talked so much trash. Yeah, he loved me, respected him, but he just, oh. Like he his damn me. mouth. <laughs> so he was stop. It's this fabric. That's it. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk. Let's talk finance real quick because a couple of uh, podcasts ago, Ark Armstead, we 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 saw his paycheck, his game check, mm. right, mm. and two thirds of it was gone in taxes. Mm. On top of the fact that he's playing in California, yeah. Right. So uh, let's take a look at the, uh, uh, what the NFL has paid you. If you could take a look at my screen um, about on VMix, um, and I'm just curious for for what you got paid in the '90s compared to what players got paid oh, today, dude. <laughs> No, you, you ain't got to put up on the screen. I can tell you. Right? I can tell you. So, so your rookie year, you were a second rounder, right? Yeah. So, four, so they paid you. Is that correct? Four hundred thousand dollars signing bonus. Four hundred thousand dollars signing bonus. And your average right? annual salary in the early nineties. Four eighty. Four eighty a year. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Unbelievable. Uh, and you're talking. Okay, so I came in as a rookie. That's at ninety two, ninety five, and then the second, the second one. So your second contract, which most guys never get. Yep. The second one, I'm the highest paid safety, safety. in the league. Wow. Number one. The number one. <laughs> Safety and league. So that that was the number. And let me tell you. So you set the market. I set the mark, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was conversations I was having with other guys, uh, Leroy Butler, yeah. uh, Merton Hanks at the time. We were pretty much the top three guys. That, yeah. Hey, you better hey, – Butler called me up. You better go get that money. <laughs> because they, set, they want you to set the mark, you next. right? They, they, next. Next. So yeah. he was before me, and I was like, dude, you make them? Yeah. yeah. Hold out. Yeah, you know, get that money. So that's how, and it, and it still happens today. Of course, it still yeah. happens today. Yeah. Guys want you know, want you to set the mark. So, yeah. you know, those are contracts back then. But you look at them now, man. It oh, your last con you signed three. You signed three contracts. Yeah, three contracts. Yeah, yeah. That's when your average annual salary four million. So yeah. So how? So, Ark Armstead said, because you're paid as an employee, mm -hmm. half is gone in tax. Oh, half gone. gone in tax. Yeah, especially in California. Oh, you're good. You're <laughs> done. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so uh, how does a modern day athlete today, uh, uh, from what you've seen guys do in the league, mm -hmm. is it the side business they start to offset the taxes they get in their in their, in their no percent? man? What, I, what you know, doing make I, your bread. I, I don't see a lot of guys to this day. I don't see a lot of guys focused on outside of outside of like maybe some media stuff that they do. Okay. Like, like you're starting to see players do podcasts or sure. not. You're starting to see that, but it's rare to see a player start a business. Mm. Mm while they're playing. Uh, was it more so, apparent than your era? Oh, well, no, not even then. Okay. Not even then. So before then, okay. the Roger Staubachs of the world, yeah. when they had, they weren't making he's any a, he's money. He was a mentor here, right? Yeah, he was yeah, a mentor right. of mine. Yeah. They weren't making any money. So Drew Pearson was working out of, at one of the Foot Lockers. Yeah. Wow. Roger was, was you know, yeah. started up his own real estate business while he was, you know, in the off season. Yeah. When you, when I came in the league, the off season programs became huge. That meant you can't even go home yeah. in the off season. So you, if you played in the Super Bowl, let's say you played in the Super Bowl, and that's in Jan on January first. In March, you're back in for the program. So that means you're back Couple working months. out. You are a commodity, man. I'm telling yeah. you, that's what they, that's how they treat. They don't care yeah. about your off the field yeah. and what you're doing off the field. They care about you on the field because if you something happens to you off the field, yeah, you then you're not available to play. So Jerry, I, lo I love Jerry. I love the owners mm -hmm. around some of them around the league. However. You are their commodity. You are theirs. Sure. Yeah. So they don't want you doing all. So you don't have a lot of guys just don't have that wherewithal to do set up businesses mm -hmm. outside of what they're mm -hmm. outside of the scope and what they're doing. And some of the guys that do set up the businesses, they're not in it every day. Yeah. They're not seeing it every day. So yeah. now you got, yeah. you know, Uncle little, Larry. little Uncle Larry, little, little <laughs> yeah. K Wan that you grew K1. up with. <laughs> he's running the the car yeah. wash. Yeah. And he's running in the dirt. Now you're losing money. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's a lot of that, that that goes along as well. It's just yeah. the mentorship outside of that is really hard for a lot of players. If you were to rank, because it's, it's uh, I, I did a, a, a some research one time with uh, ESPN. Uh, Ed Butowski, we did a, a series mm. called Broke on ESPN, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah. And within 35 years of playing professional sports, both athletes end up sadly yes. broke. Absolutely. So what would you say would it be the top three? Leaks top three drains of a professional athlete why they would end up broke through years. Really, hands down, Ooh. hands down, family. 
family because I'm, I want you to paint this picture of, you know, let, let's just take <coughs> the social economics of a kid that's playing in South Dallas, right? Yeah. So I'll give you mine. I grew up in Maryville, West Side of Phoenix, which was socioeconomically was a struggle, yeah. right? Yep. Four, my mom, four kids, worked two jobs. Uh, sent me, I found a way to get a scholarship. I had no understanding of finances, none. My mother had an accounting background, which really helped me. Yeah. In a, in She's a working for ways. the courts, right? She's working for the courts, yeah, yeah. and then she was did the books for the Elks Lodge. Oh, not ah. this. Yeah. Right? She, I used to tell her she was cooking the books. But anyway, <laughs> she, she, she had an accounting background in that. So that really helped me in, in, in a lot of ways. But social, economically, I had no history mm. yeah. of financial literacy. Of financial yeah. literacy, financial yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right? So most players, a lot of those players are coming out. You used to watch these kids coming out of Alabama, man. They're from mm. Dade County. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Miami now they're yeah. Yeah. now they're playing. Now they're getting some NIL That's money, it. right? Mm-hmm. They got so many people around them, yeah. family members, dads, dads, mm-hmm. cousins. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got all these people who are just pulling. Yeah. Hey, send me that, you know, give me that five thousand for this and just a little that. piece, right? Just a little piece. Just a little piece. Yeah. I need to start this business yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah. you're getting oh, you're getting hit in so many different ways. I think the family, like people always say. You know, and I remember Dion saying this when I first met Dion. He said, man, people always say, you know, you, you change. He said, dang right, I changed. <laughs> I did change. You know, the right. bank account changed. Yeah, sure. It. So because sure. it changed, I got to protect sure. what's mine, right? Yeah. And that's the reality of it. I mean, you have to become selfish in a lot of ways because yeah. it don't last forever. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. sit in the locker room and watch guys play two years, and they're gone. Three years the average. Two yeah. and a half years yeah. the average, right? Not for long. NFL. Yeah, not for long, yeah. right? So it's, this ain't going to last forever. Yeah. So if whatever you make, whatever you have, you better find a way to protect it yeah. at all costs. Yeah, gotcha. Would, so family would be one. Yes. What would be another one? Uh, bad business dealings. Bad business deal. Like for, I, I would say not only that, but a lot of guys aren't prepared for the taxes that are coming. Like mm. you think that you're making $5 million. You ain't making $5 million. You ain't making a film. Uh, I will say the, the white man with that the red, white, and blue. <laughs> Uncle Sam? Yeah, the, the hat on. He's coming. I want you. Yeah, he's coming. He, hands down, he's coming, right? And then your agent's coming. Your own cost of living is coming. Yeah. Uh, your family now, you know, yeah. mama, you know, whoever, yeah. that's, that's coming. So yeah. there's so many things that offset that taxes are huge. Mm. Just the understanding yeah. of taxes, right? Because right. you really don't have what they say that you have. For sure. That's not, that's not reality. And then I would say, so family, taxes, and then I would say the business dealings on the outside. Okay. He's got, yeah. you know, we, we get into things that we don't know about. We don't yeah. know enough business. And we have this feeling that because I'm successful on the field that I can accomplish and I can, I can will myself into yeah. it. Man, business don't care, dude. Yeah. Business does not care. Yeah. Like, you, and it's you, not stop. It's just it's not three hours on Sunday. Yeah. Exactly. So Sunday, yeah. I can will myself physically to yeah. win my battles and all that. But on yeah. the business side, yeah. you things just go up. And you have no idea. Mm, no what idea. was your biggest transition? Because you, you, you were mentioning that one of the hardest transitions was for you to go from NFL athlete. I mean, you've been playing this game since yeah. you were seven, eight years old, mm-hmm. right? And, and it's adulthood. Yeah. And then you transition out, and, and, and now you're a civilian. You're no yeah. a professional player. What was that? Because I felt that same way too coming out the military. Like, I was respected with the uniform. I was respected with stripes on my on my on my right. on my collar, right, mm-hmm. on my sleeve. I'm just Joe Blow now. I'm just nobody. It's the humility, man. Right. I, and I, the one thing I did have is when I was playing, my agent, his name was George Bass. George Bass was uh, the CFO for a development company called Weber and Company. Mm. Targets, Super Targets, Home Depots. They did a lot of that, and. I always wanted to figure out what they did. Uh-huh. You know, I was, yeah. they were highly successful, yeah. highly successful. And I actually saw the projects that they were doing, yeah. just driving down the toy. So I was at, you know, hey, man, you know, what are you guys doing? He said, well, if you want to see, come check it out. So I went and checked it out and saw they were, they were doing well. And this is in 97. And he said, hey, and I said, hey, look, I'd love to get involved. And he says, well, if you want to get involved, you got to take down the office space. And I can show you what we do. You can take on off. You take take, on take, take down the office space. Okay. You got to learn. Okay. And I'll help you learn the business, yeah. but you ain't gonna get involved in what we do until you start to understand what we do. Okay. Right. So I took down a little office space, and kind of saw in the off season, season would play. I do my thing. 
season ends, I'd show up after my workout about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'd stay there from 10 to 5, and I'd be there with George Bass, John Weber, and I'd sit there and watch all these retail centers that they were doing wow. and how they started up. How they So I got a little, had a little bit of that background. Now, look, I wasn't no expert, but I kind of understood the real estate world and that I wanted to go into that real estate world. Yeah. Roger Staubach was a mentor as well, right. uh, who mentored Emmett yeah. and, and everyone else. Yeah. Man, he's just fantastic dude. But I kind of understood the transition that I was going to get into. Now, it's one thing to understand. It's another when your football career is over with, and now you're in it. <laughs> it's all you got. And that's all I got. Like, that's all, <laughs> and it is a humbling experience. I think the number one thing that athletes have problems with through that transition is the humility of learning something all over again. Yeah. Admitting that you don't know, mm -hmm. and then working at it, showing up every morning to find ways, just like you're studying film or studying yeah. your opponent, you have to understand the business, the lingo, how to carry yourself, go to networking events. Yeah. Like all these years, you're sure. you like, I ain't going to that networking. That's it. Uh, I'm Darren Watson. I'm right. going to <laughs> I'm a pro No, player. no, no. Not, not, not anymore. Got it. Wow. You got to get out. To, and, and, and the best thing, the greatest thing that you see a lot of guys doing, and I thank God I had mentors, that when I was playing, I was using that network. Perfect. Mm. Well, you're I on the showing platform. Up. I, yeah, yeah, I was on the platform. So I was watching. Yeah. I was going to events yeah. and going to Make-A-Wish deals and yeah. United Way deals and, yeah. and, and interacting even though I was playing, right? Yeah. And, Smart. And a lot of players don't do that. So you're investing in relationships already. Absolutely. Because those yeah. same relationships, they're Apple friends now. Yeah, 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 I'm helping yeah. them out with tickets. Hey, when I'm playing, yeah, yeah you want the kids want to come out? And, yeah. And those same, their kids yeah. that I was working with yeah. are bosses and CEOs there today. It is. There it is. But I'm it. getting on the field and I'm, I'm just – that's just the part of it that you it's, – it's the humility part of it that a lot of guys just can't get past. Darren, would you say uh, – a quote that I love is the difference between contacts and contracts is the letter R. And oh. that stands for relationships. That stands for like, like, So man, when I'm you understand you. the human mm -hmm. capital – by investing in and humbling you yourself. Hit it. They are, you, know, you just would, yeah. hit it. You know, would you they, say that to somebody that's a transferable skill, no yes. matter if you're an athlete or not? Yes. Being willing to learn those skill sets and Absolutely. be coachable? Absolutely, because there was a lot of guys who were phenomenal football players who understood the contract but didn't understand the contacts of that they had that's that it. they should have taken advantage of. Just the relationships. They yeah. never. They were like, ah, I'm not doing it because I'm so-and-so. I'm yeah. prime. Yeah. Well, yeah. I ain't yeah. going to that thing. I'm not yeah. doing that. I'm, yeah. You know, you know who I am. Yeah. But when you're at your height, man, you're watching guys like like I've watched LeBron James and his team. Like they're in it, man. Like that's the new age. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah. in it. They're networking yeah. now. Yeah. And setting themselves up for yes, later for sure. down the line. Yeah. No. That's it. So when when you're looking at commercial hey, man, real estate, real quick, uh, five minute warning. Okay. Roger that. Uh, when you're looking at uh, uh, investments that, that players can get involved in, what would you say what's going on in real estate today? Yes. There's craziness in real estate today. There's a craziness in the economy today. Players, you know, they, I remember one uh, player, uh, one of the tackles, I can't remember his name. I think it was, uh, starts with a T. But he said, don't pay me. Don't pay me in salary. Pay me in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what would you, from a financial literacy standpoint, investment standpoint, where would you tell players today that's in the game, that's getting salaries today, where should they be investing their, their finances? Yeah, I look, man, I think there's, first of all, you had to understand your portfolio, right? And understand mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, look, how much do you have in real estate? How much do you have in private equity and in funds and whatnot? Like, understand those. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that's, look, I, shame, shame on those financial advisors that are out there that are not holding some type of seminar for their players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not the NFL. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys have financial advisors right not mm -hmm. agents mm -hmm. the financial guys first of all the agent and the financial guy shouldn't be the same guy that shouldn't be that should not be happening they need to be and your tax person needs to be the third resource, <laughs> right yeah. you need to be looking at each other yeah, yeah, right? right so uh understanding that aspect of it but then man look i'm in the real estate world and i've mm -hmm. kind of understood it for a while so i'm kind of biased yeah in in my yeah. my way of sure. thought but Sell i know it. like yeah yeah I know it's an asset that I can touch, yeah, 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 that yeah. I can feel, and it's yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. And especially in this market, yeah. Mm. Yeah. it's going that way. Yeah, for sure. Right? Now, we might level out. I might get hit with taxes here yeah. as, a, as a property owner, property taxes, yeah. but that asset is yeah. a nice asset for me. I know where it's going, right? For sure. So that's, 
And I'm not giving that advice to a lot of players. I do have guys that are currently playing yeah. that I mentor that come through and yeah. come to the office and all. Yeah. And a lot of those guys are they're 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 looking at it from yeah. a real estate with a real estate hat of going back to the neighborhoods they're from, buying up some of the little condos sure. or apartment complexes. And mm. I get it. I you know I get that. Part. Especially now with uh, with a lot of these uh, uh, interest rates uh, um, resetting. That's right. In the, in the next couple of years because they were they were initially cast at three percent, two percent. Now they're looking at seventy percent. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. yeah. The cap rates and 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 these, and these properties, etc. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of, one of our pro athletes, uh, wrestler Bobby Lashley, he actually was sitting right there. Uh, mm. So. He, Reason why he put because I'm in the insurance business. That's what, why'd you put a, a portion of your your net worth inside uh, insurance? Insurance, yeah. Because yep. I, I took him down right down the street here on Beltline mm -hmm. National Life Group. It's the one with the building with the the circle on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, it, as it comes out, they've been around since California was in a state. Wow. They've been around for, you know 175 years. Mm. The first life insurance policy they paid was like a thousand bucks, and you know in that time we only pay claims in the United States. In California, yeah. it wasn't a state yet. Right. So so they paid it out because they were just a new insurance company and right. have a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. Anyway, make a long story short, I take them down to the National Life Group right here. Mm. We're touring, and we take them to the commercial real estate department. Mm. So wait a minute, insurance companies invest in commercial real estate? Yeah. We open up the books, 600 loans. On commercial real estate. Wow! Wow! So that's that's you know a lot of people don't think that you know uh, 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 insurance invested in an asset class like commercial real estate. We right. think they get the returns from. That's it. right. You that's know? so right. That's so true. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm excited about that. I I wish we had another. We, we got you got to come back, man. Oh, I, come I, on, I, man. I wish you come back because yeah. you have it's to. People get from a six and seven figure squad uh, because a lot of people today are, are. This is the moment for people to financially get ahead. That's right. And, yeah. Uh, and I man, appreciate I appreciate what you do, though, Matt. Seriously, oh, thank you, thank man. Because there's so many people listening yeah. that are out there, and even to the point, man, dude, you got to go back into the NFL and and start. Like, I'll hook it up. Okay. You, don't, don't you worry. About okay. It. Okay. We'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll I, I do seminars. Out. There you go. I, I do yes. That. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People do things. That's yeah. what I do. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, do I, I will do that. Uh, what are your thoughts, your comments, your questions here for Darren, the other Darren Palmer, Darren Woodson, myself. You agree with us? You don't agree with us? What would you ask Darren the next time he comes back on the show? Please put it in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys tuning in to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, the Seven Figure Squad podcast. Make sure you subscribe, hit like, and make sure you share. That being said, on behalf of the double Darrens. There we go. Darren and Darren. <laughs> be mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today. Bye-bye.